So now that we know how to find maximums and minimums using calculus, we can use the first derivative test or the second derivative test, we can go to some real world optimization problems. Maximizing and minimizing is one of the biggest things that we do in the business industry. It's a very important concept, so let's look at some of the applications to see how it works. First one says, a manufacturer wants to design an open box that has a square base and a surface area S of 108 square inches, as shown in the figure below. What dimensions will produce a box with the maximum volume? Take a moment to read that question again and see what we're dealing with. It seems to me that we're dealing with two separate equations. The first one would be surface area, and the second one would be volume. If I look at the volume of the box, it's length times width times height, so in this case it would be x times x times h, which is x squared h. The idea is we want to maximize the volume, so we're going to be taking the derivative of the volume function, finding its critical values. We could either do the second derivative test or the first derivative test at that point of time. The current problem is this has two variables. Anytime you have two variables, you're not going to be able to take the derivative of it and maximize it like you want to. So what do we have to do? Well, the idea is we have to get this volume in terms of one variable. How do we do that? Well, we need to use the given information to figure out what one of the variables is in terms of the other. So let's go back to the other equation, which was on surface area. If I look at the surface area of this equation, or of this box, let's see what we would get. If I wanted to look at the bottom of the box, the length and the width would be x squared. If I want to look at the sides of the box, it looks like each of the four sides would be x times h. So that would be 4x times h. That's length times width. And then there's one, the front, the back, the left side, the right side. There is no top, so we don't need to worry about that. So it seems to me that x squared plus 4xh is our surface area equation of this box. Okay, what other information is given to us in this problem? If you read, it says that the surface area must be 108 square inches. So now I can go back to my surface area equation and I can set it equal to 108. What this does is it allows us to solve for one of the variables in terms of the other. I can solve for h or x, whichever one's easier. To me, it seems pretty easy to solve for h on this, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation for h. I'm going to do this by subtracting x squared from both sides. That would give me 4xh equals negative x squared plus 108. I'm going to divide both sides by 4x. When I divide both sides by 4x, I would have h equals, and I'd have negative x squared plus 108 all over 4x. Now that I've solved h, solved for h in this equation, what I can do is go back to my volume equation and plug in this value for h instead. So if I go back to my other equation now, my volume would equal x squared times this new h, which was negative x squared plus 108 all over 4x. I'm going to do some simplifying. I notice that one of the x's is going to simplify. And I'm going to distribute. So I'd have negative 1 fourth x cubed plus, well, 108 divided by 4 is 27. So this would be plus 27x. So this is my volume function right here in terms of one variable. This right here is the one that I'm going to try to maximize. How do I find a maximum? Again, I can use the first derivative or the second derivative test. I do need to find the derivative, though. So let's find the derivative of volume. That would be negative 3 fourths x squared plus 27. The idea is I want to find the critical values now. Whether I use the first or second derivative test, I need to find those critical values. So I'm going to set it equal to 0. This is never undefined, so I don't need to worry about that. Subtract 27 from both sides. I'd have negative 3 fourths x squared equals negative 27. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 4 thirds, the reciprocal. I end up with x squared equals 36. 
I take the square root of both sides. Usually you have to remember plus or minus. The negative doesn't make any sense here because we're talking about the side of a box. So all we have to consider is x equals 6. So it looks like our critical value is x equals 6. We need to quickly check to see would this actually be a maximum or a minimum. So how do we do that? This is an easy polynomial function, so I'm going to go ahead and find the second derivative of the function. The second derivative of the function would be equal to, well, it would be negative 3 fourths times 2. So that would be, what, negative 3 halves x, and then the derivative of 27 is 0. If I plug in the value, x equals 6, v double prime of 6, the second derivative evaluated at 6, would be negative 3 halves times 6, which is a negative number. A negative number means, for the second derivative, means my graph is concave down. Since my graph is concave down and this is a critical value, that means it is a maximum. So we've proved that this is a maximum using the second derivative test. So let's go back up and look at what did the actual question want. We found the x value that maximized it, but what did the question actually want? It says, what dimensions will produce a box of maximum volume? Well, we just figured out the key value is x equals 6. So I know the length and the width of the box because those are both x, but I don't know the height of the box yet. So what do I have to do? Well, here's where I work backwards. I go back to the first equation where I actually solve for h in terms of x. So now I know that h equals negative 6 squared plus 108 all divided by 4 times 6. Plug that into your calculator now, and let's see what you get. I'm getting 3, so that means I have a height of 3. So let's go back and put it all together. If we want to know the, vol the dimensions of the box, we want to do length times width times height is how you would write the dimensions. In this case, let's make sure we use our units as well. It says that it's in terms of square inches, so each one of these is in length of inches. So it would be 6 inches long, 6 inches wide, and we got 3 inches for h high. So the dimensions of the box that would maximize the volume would be 6 inches by 6 inches by 3 inches. So again, let's review what the heck just happened. We started off by reading the problem and realizing we were dealing with two things. We had a surface area, and we also had a volume. So we wrote down, looking at the picture, we had x by x by h, we wrote down the volume, which was length times width times height, x squared times h. We wanted to maximize the volume, but couldn't maximize it because it was in terms of two variables. So what did we do? We went to the other equation, which was surface area. We did the bottom plus the four sides. We knew that that had to equal 108 because that was given to us. Solved for one of the variables. Substituted that into the volume equation. The volume was in terms of one variable at that point in time. Found the derivative made sure it was a max, interpreted the answer. So it's a very long process. you got to be careful with it, um, but it is a good application of finding maximums. So in general, what do you want to do when solving optimization problems? First thing you want to do is determine the equation you want to maximize or minimize, like we did here, the volume equation. This will likely contain two variables. It had both the x and the h. So what did we have to do? We had to determine the secondary equation. In this case, that was the surface area of equation, which usually involves the restriction of the problem. That's where they said it had to equal 108. Solve for one of the variables. That's where we solve for h. Substitute this variable into the other one, which was over here where we substituted in for h. We got the volume in terms of one variable. That's what it says right here. Volume should be in terms of one variable, or your equation should be in terms of one variable. You want to find the maximum or minimum. So how do you do that? We found the derivative. We set it equal to zero or undefined, and we found our critical values. That's what you do first. Now you want to use the first derivative or the second derivative test to verify that it's a maximum or a minimum. We use the second derivative test because finding the second derivative of a polynomial was very easy. If this were a difficult derivative, I would have used the first derivative test. Then we interpreted the solution. We had that x equals 6 created a maximum, but that wasn't the answer to the problem. The problem actually wanted the length, width, and height. So we had to go back and determine we already had length and width. We had to find that height 
plugged in the value of x equals 6, got our h value, then we were able to get the answer. So when you get your answer x equals 6, that's not necessarily what the question is asking. Be very careful of that.